What's up? Time to knock off another section of the CD collection. Uh, first up, we have a band that's kind of been, uh, I've heard them described as death acoustic. Uh, they're just kind of occult rock. This is Ancient Wisdom with a Godlike Inferno. Uh, they have like the most harmonious acoustic type melodies with some of the darkest and most occult uh, subject matter that you will ever uh, come across. I should not love this band as much as I do, but I absolutely love Ancient Wisdom. Godlike Inferno, this one, the, I'm not a big fan of the packaging on this. It's just that cheap kind of fold out digipack. There's the actual disc, not much going on there. But it's it'll, it'll get stuck in your head. Uh, the track, uh, the opposition on this, it will get stuck in your head and, and it's one of those songs that when it gets stuck in your head, just the theme of the song, is it's a little out there, but uh, I do dig the album. Uh, next up, we have probably my favorite release from Ancient Wisdom. This is the one that actually got me into the band. It was my introduction. Uh, this is Death Like. Uh, this came out, the title track to this, I saw the video, and the, uh, the, the song hit me just at a time in my life that was just like perfect timing for me to hear it, and it just... My, my love affair with this band started then and there. I love the inside of this. Love just everything about this. I was so excited. I found this at a uh, FYE in Norfolk, Virginia at the time. Oops. And I dropped the disc. There we go. There's the actual disc. Uh, like I said, I found this at a FYE in a... Uh, in Norfolk when I was living in Virginia for a, a period in my life and it, it was pretty dark uh, time going on so this just hit and resonated perfectly at that time sorry if you hear the dogs uh, making racket in the background not much I could do about that right now uh, next up we have uh, Ancient Wisdom with Sacrificial this is the one that I own on the most different types of variants um, I have this on several different vinyls I actually have you can't see it but I have I don't know you can kind of see it up there it's like the uh, the the certified rare edition of the vinyl also but yeah this is a uh, probably when they started going a little bit heavier approach to their music very good stuff on this one as well uh, as a complete work this is probably their best output, in my opinion. Death Like just kind of has that uh, nostalgia feeling and that, that I ha I'm i just kind of uh, a little partial to Death Like, but as far as uh, musically goes, uh, Sacrificial, for me, is probably their strongest work. There's some great songs on here. Um, City of Stone is a great one. There's the inside. And yeah. Ancient Wisdom, Sacrificial. Uh, next up, we have Ancient Wisdom with 33. This one was kind of like a, like with Sacrificial, they started going to a little bit heavier approach. Um, this one was kind of like they were a bit lost in between their old style and the, and the Sacrificial style. And uh, I don't know. There was just something, I don't It just, this one just kind of felt off to me. I'm not quite sure. I still enjoy the album. It's just probably, out of all of them that I own, it's probably my least favorite. But I, I actually do still listen to this one. I I'm not going to talk bad about it because it is still a good release. And everything from Ancient Wisdom does get playtime still, which is saying a lot considering how big this collection is. And then last but not least, uh, we have their newest release. This is Mundus. Mundus. And uh, this was a, a pretty stellar album as well. I don't think this one got the, the recognition that it actually deserved, but I did enjoy this one quite a bit. Uh, it should be getting about time for some new stuff from these guys, so definitely uh, looking forward to seeing what Nathan Opposition has in store for us. But good, just like I said, it was kind of described as death acoustic. It's just very good performed occult rock, so... Next up, we have the newest release from And Oceans. This is Cosmic World Mother. I've heard this one hyped up quite a bit. The hype is very well justified. This is just well-performed, kind of symphonic black metal. Kind of a throwback to when these guys were putting out good material. They kind of 
had some weird stuff going on there for a while. This is a, a bit of an homage to their their earlier works, and it is quite good. I've heard. I know some people had this pretty high up on their end of the year list, and, and rightfully so. It is a great album. It very easily could have made it on mine if I had been so inclined to do so. Uh, next up, we have Angel Dust with Bleed. Unfortunately, I only own the disc. I don't have any of the artwork or anything for this. This is just great, classic, thrashy power metal. Fantastic stuff there. I wish I still had the case and everything else, but unfortunately, all I got left is the disc. I am thankful to have the disc, though, because it still gets playtime as well. Uh, next up, we have an album that came out in the 80s. It was reissued, I believe, by Shadow Kingdom Records in... Uh, 2018. This is Angel of Mercy with the Avatar. Fantastic kind of thrashy, uh, speedy, traditional heavy metal. Um, good stuff here. I was stoked that I enjoyed this as much as I did. I believe I got this on one of those Hell's Headbanger sales where they were uh, selling stuff for ridiculous it was like 10 cds for 50 bucks or something like that when when you and you're trying to fill your cart you've got probably seven or eight that you really want and then you have a couple that you have to throw in there that to try out some new stuff this was one of those and it turned out to be a a great addition i was glad i threw it in there this is the two disc version i believe it has a um some live tracks and yeah it's got some uh Unreleased tracks, live tracks, demo type stuff on that second disc. But Angel of Mercy with the Avatar, good classic sounding stuff there. I believe this is the only album that they ever put out, which is a bit unfortunate. I would have liked to have heard a bit more material. Uh, next up, we have uh, Angel Rot with Unlistenable Hymns of Indulgent Damnage. This is um, Stoner Doom Metal by uh, John Five from White Zombie. There are other members in this band as well, but this is his kind of side project, I guess. Um, there we go. Not a whole lot to say about this one. You can find this super cheap. I mean, it's Stoner Doom. It's not going to be for everybody, but it was a bit weird uh, to hear a different side of his of, of his music uh, playing abilities, I guess. Next up, we have Angel Corpse with the Inexplorable. Uh, this is a promo version that was in a cardboard sleeve that has been fitted for a jewel case. I got this super cheap. I got this for a couple bucks, so I didn't mind it being cut up as far as the cardboard goes because the music is all intact. The disc was in good shape, and I do prefer jewel cases anyway. There you see Helm Kemp on the back. But, yeah, Angel Corpse, I don't have to really say much about Angel Corpse. We all know that they, what kind of band Angel Corpse are. Uh, we have more Angel Corpse. This is of Lucifer and Lightning. Just more black and death metal. Uh, fantastic stuff here. A bit more polished on this album than some of their early, other works. Uh, it just seems like this one has a, a crisper production value. There we go. Next up, we have, uh, I got this out of a, I believe it was the Bridge Nine Records grab bag that I did last year. I, I don't remember much about this this, this release at all. I, a little while into that grab bag, it was beginning a bit monotonous listening to this stuff because it was all just kind of run-of-the-mill hardcore, um, a genre where a lot of stuff sounds almost identical anyway. Uh, this is Anger Regiment with Aces and Eights. And I just, I don't know, I don't remember much about it. It, it doesn't ring any bells as, as of leaving a pleasant taste in my mouth. It's something that I will have to revisit if once that, uh, it doesn't happen often, but when that hardcore kind of uh, itch surfaces, I may pull this off and give it another visit just to kind of give it a chance to redeem itself in my mind. But a lot of that Bridge Nine stuff sounded almost identical it was just to the point where it was just so monotonous and redundant that i, I just had to take a break from it uh, next up we have some <clears throat> fantastic excuse me throat's good <clears throat> some fantastic death metal um i got this from uh, in a metalhead box it was probably been a couple of years ago now uh this is anger rot with the splendid iniquity this is 
very, very heavy, almost, it's not, it teeters on the line of brutal, it teeters on the line of technical at times. It's just well-performed, fast-paced, amazing death metal. Uh, they put out another album last year. I have not had the chance to check that one out yet, but I definitely want to. Uh, this was released on Black Market Metal. There for a while, I was finding so much great material, material through uh, Black Market Metal, and I just haven't he heard much from them as of late. I don't know if it has to do with the pandemic or what, but we have uh, Angerot, fantastic release there. Definitely check that one out if you're into death metal and you have not done so. Uh, next up, we have some brutal death metal out of, I believe, Malaysia, and this one's a bit obscure. Uh, this is a demo that came out, I'm going to say, in 2003. And there's not a whole lot to this. Uh, this is Anguish with Mass mis mass Dismemberment. It's just in this little jacket inside of a plastic sleeve. The disc itself is just a CDR, just a plain CDR. And there's the inside. This is actually really good Brutal Death Metal. I believe um, Anguish has put out some other material as well. It's kind of grind quarry ish uh brutal death good stuff here i i don't remember where i got this and it, it's very obscure it's probably hard to come by now being such an old demo and they're not I'm, I'm sure that these didn't stand the test of time just because there's not much to it but i am glad to have that in the collection uh next up we have a a band it's a black metal mixed with brutal death metal and they tend to have the longest album titles ridiculously long album titles of all time it, it, it's insane uh this is anima damnata with this is atrocious disfigurement of the redeemer's corpse at the graveyard of humanity yeah and they have other releases and the album titles on all of those releases are just as ridiculous this is pretty good i want to add uh, a bit more of anima damnata into the collection because it, it's pretty original stuff the way that they're able to to blend uh, the brutal death metal and black metal styles together. There are some definite riffs going on on this as well. And I, it does make me want to check out some, some other um, albums and their discography and that type of stuff. I've heard bits and pieces of the others. This is probably my favorite release from them, but some of their other stuff seemed pretty, pretty well performed as well. So I may... I know after I did the last video for the CD collection, I actually bought like two or three albums just from bands that were in that previous section because this, doing these videos, not only is it entertainment for you guys seeing what's in my collection, it's kind of uh, good for me because I revisit bands that have been shelved and I just kind of, I, I know I say something similar almost every video, but it, it does happen that way. So there's uh, Enema, Demnata, good stuff there. Uh, next up, this is one that I got in that VCLT from Marty Worm. Uh, this is Anima Nera. This is just early 2000s metalcore. Uh, pretty good stuff. I mean, it's nothing to to write home, you know, write home about and, and change the world and change the genre of metalcore. But it's well performed. Pretty good stuff. Uh, not something that I'm going to pull off, you know, once a week and listen to. But it is rightfully deserving of a spot in the collection. Uh, just self-titled Anima Nera is the name of that. I don't know if I said that or not. So Anima Nera. Next up, we have some Brutal Death Metal mixed with Grindcore. I got this out of that huge uh, Severed Records 100 CD grab bag that I did. This one was one that was actually memorable and uh, pretty good stuff here. This is Animals Killing People with Eat Your Murder. I dug this one quite a bit. It was a very fun listen. I mean, a lot of that stuff, as I was saying earlier about like kind of like the Bridge Nine Records grab bag, that Severed, Reg Severed uh, Records grab bag got monotonous as well. 100 CDs and and so many of those brutal death metal bands uh, sound so similar. It could get, I mean, it can get overwhelming. It can burn you out if you're not careful. Luckily, I have enough variety in the collection. When that starts happening, I could just switch over to something else. But this one, actually, this one was memorable. I did dig this one quite a bit. I know when I did the video, some people were telling me that I was going to enjoy this one, and I absolutely did. So... There we go. Animals killing people with uh, Eat Your Murder. Next up, we have uh, a split. This one is Animals Killing People uh, mixed and versus uh, Andromorphous Relaxia. Rexa uh, let me try that again. 
Andromorphia, Andromorphus Rex Alia. Yeah, there we go. I, I don't remember a whole bunch about this split. I did give it one listen and then just kind of moved on as I was going through that uh, severed stuff. This was also in that, uh, that grab bag. I'm usually not the biggest fan of splits. I, I, w I would rather have a band just have a standalone EP or demo, just a shorter thing. So it's just the uh, the at one project standing alone on the split. I get why they do them to kind of uh, increase exposure. It's cheaper to do releases that way when you when you split. You know, have more hands in the pot. But I would much rather. I don't know. I'm just not a. I don't. I don't. I don't know why. I'm just not a huge fan of split albums. Uh, next up, we have some de depressive black metal. Uh, this is Animus with Hallucinations Ideals. This is the sophomore. Uh, release from this project. I actually dug this one quite a bit more than their initial output. You can find this album uh, used or secondhand for next to nothing. And I, re if you're into depressive black metal, uh, definitely uh, at least give it a shot. I dug this quite a bit. Obviously, uh, I liked it enough to pull the trigger and purchase a copy. Their debut album, I didn't quite. I, I just didn't really get it. But this one is uh, pretty good. The, uh, the, the full album title, like I said, the band name is Animus, but the full album title is Hallucinations, Ideals, Ideals Surrounding Water, Sand, and Clouds of Dust. So I think on the spine it just says Ideals, but pretty, pretty decent, depressive black metal right there. Uh, next up we have some more black metal. This is Animus Mortis with uh, Atrobliss, Re Residues from Verb and Flesh. I honestly have no idea how this got in my collection. I do not remember where I got it from. Um, as I was getting these albums ready for this video and kind of stacking them to the side, I came across this one, and, and I, I just can't figure out where I got it from. It's pretty good. I gave it a little bit of a listen and immediately uh, refreshed my memory as far as the music came. Just a uh, very riff-driven, uh, classic-sounding black metal and I dug it, so, but I, I just don't remember, I don't remember buying this at all, um, I don't know if someone sent this to me, I, I, I cannot, I don't know, I'm getting old, had a pop-up come up on the computer, there we go, had to clear that off, but we're good now, uh, next up, we have Annihilator, this is some classic, kind of speedy thrash metal, uh, this is the, uh, From the Vault, two From the Vault series, this has Alice in Hell, and, um, Never, never, never land. So, uh, probably the only two releases that I need personally from Annihilator on one little set here. So I am good as far as uh, Annihilator goes. This was actually a library co uh, copy. This is from King County Library System. I have no idea where King County Library System is, but they have some awesome stuff in their in their library collection. Apparently, it's two disc. As I said, split up. Uh, the only downside to this is it has that that King County uh, Library kind of security tag on there. Uh, it doesn't affect the playability of the disc or anything, but those are impossible to get off. So, and there's no telling how many years those stickers have already been on the disc themselves. So, not even going to try to get those off of there. Uh, next up, we have some Deathcore. Uh, this is Annotations of an Autopsy with two, The Reign of Darkness. Uh, pretty good, straightforward, almost uh, MySpace era Deathcore. Uh, I, I was supposed to see these guys live uh, in Memphis many, many years ago. They ended up having to cancel. This jewel case is broken. I have not listened to this album in ages. There we go. <clears throat> On the bill that I, I was supposed to see these guys with, I believe I still saw Carnifex and, and some other bands, but I was a bit disappointed that I didn't get to see uh, Annotations of an Autopsy. And then next up, we have uh, World of Sludge. This is their fairly recent EP. I actually have two copies. One is a misprint copy where they have it all, all the files on one track. I believe this one is the, the, uh, the misprint. It just has one single track with all five uh, songs on that one track on that misprint. And then I have the one that's like kind of the corrected version that has them separated. 
this one had a bit of water damage. I don't know how that happened, as you can see on the booklet. And but I bought these secondhand as well, so it's it's kind of weird what some of you people do with with your uh, stuff in your collections. Uh, next up, we have Anomalous with uh, cognit cognitive dissonance. Uh, this is kind of technical, uh, genty death metal. Pretty good stuff. Not uh, you won't hear me saying that I enjoy genty technical death metal just way too often. But Anomalous, man, they just do it for me. I, I can't I can't describe uh, why. It appeals to me the way it does, but I, I do dig this band quite a bit. They only have this little EP and the full length, which I also own. This one is uh, Om Omnivalent. I bought these both from Brutal Bands. Um, I also own the, the hat. I wear it sometimes as well. I know you've probably seen me wear it in previous videos, but just well-performed, uh, technical, genty, death metal. It's uh, good stuff, so check out uh, Anomalous if you have not. Uh, next up is one that was sent to me by uh, Isaac Gala. This is Anorexia Nervosa with the September EP. Uh, Isaac sent me this one in a little care package. <clears throat> and, and, man, my, sorry, my voice is... <clears throat> my voice is acting up today. He sent me this. I either won a contest or he sent a care package. And it, I know he had all kinds of extra stuff thrown in. And uh, this one's pretty good. Um... Uh, black metal symphonic black metal this band started out as death metal and kind of uh changed gears a little bit and i tend to enjoy their latter material a bit more as far as stuff in their discography so this is probably their newest release that they put out as far as uh as far as i can remember so i was stoked to get this one in that little package so appreciate that one as it uh, next up, we have some more Deathcore. This is Antagony with Days of Night. Uh, I'm not sure if you want, can consider this one MySpace era Deathcore or not. It is the only release that I own from this band, but it is some pretty good stuff here. Um, I, I still revisit this one from time to time and throw it in. Just some, some well-performed, uh, decent-sounding Deathcore right there. Uh, next up, we have Anthrax with Snapshot. Ten great tracks plus four collectible snapshots. This is a, I don't know, this almost felt like a cash grab type release. It has some live tracks and some cover songs, and then it just came with these little Anthrax photo cards and that type of stuff. I am not the hugest Anthrax fan, so that is actually the only Anthrax release that, uh, that I own. Uh, next up, we have some atmospheric black metal, um, ambient black metal. This is Anti-Society with Yano Habra Manara. Uh, great stuff here. It's mainly instrumental. There are vocals here and there uh, sprinkled in, but I dig this quite a bit. It was limited to 15 copies, and somehow I was able to to grab. Um, I don't know if you can see it there on the back where it says limited to 15, but somehow I was able to get one in my possession. Very thankful. This is actually the only release that I own from this project. I do need to try to seek out some more material but when they're that limited eh, you're probably not going to get it the last three that i'm going to show this video is going on a little longer than what i usually do with these is a uh, some more uh death metal mixed with grindcore a bit of technicality going on seems like this band's albums are in every grab bag that i buy i would have lost money on the last uh relapse records grab bag because i was willing to bet that there was going to be at least one album from this from this project in there and there was not for a change uh this is anti-gamma first up this is resonance this is probably my favorite release from anti-gamma and you can find this people uh cannot give this album away and i don't understand this is just great stuff i, I dig it quite a bit but it's funny to me how many times i have received this in care packages i've received this in grab bags it's just people cannot give this album away enough i don't know if that's just a testament to how garbage my personal taste are but i dig this album quite a bit next up we have more anti gamma uh this is probably my least favorite album in their discography this is warning uh not terrible but it's not it's, it's nothing that uh I, I don't find myself returning to this one very often it's kind of sandwiched in as you can see i still got the little relapse i think this came in a relapse grab bag at some point 
uh, I listened to it once. Just, I don't know, I wasn't feeling this one as much as, uh, definitely after, as a follow-up to Resonance, I, I just wasn't digging it. And then we have uh, Meteor. This was kind of a bounce back uh, release for Annie Gamma. I, I did do this one quite a bit. I like the little kind of spacey uh, vibe going on with this one. So it was a definite improvement over Warning for sure. But that's all that I've got for this uh, section. I don't know when I'll do the next. I just kind of do these when I feel like it. But we will continue marching on through the CD collection. Uh, that's all for today, so stay classy.